In this video, we are going to be talking about scientific notation and how to convert numbers to and from scientific notation. But first, why do scientists use scientific notation? Well, they represent very large and very small numbers every single day, and just like you, they want an easier way to do that. Let's take a look at this mass. 0. 0. 0.0000, lots and lots of zeros, 8, 9 grams. Now, I wouldn't want to have to write that out every single time it needed to be represented. Instead, I want a shortcut. So I'm going to write out 8.9 times 10 to the negative 13th grams. Now, it still represents the same number, but it's a lot less work and a lot less counting zeros and a lot less likely that I will make a mistake when I write out that number. It still means the same thing. Take this next number, 6022000, lots and lots and lots of zeros. This is the most commonly used number in chemistry. It happens to represent the number of items in a mole. So you will be representing it a significant amount of times when you take a chemistry course. But you don't want to have to count out all those zeros. So instead, you write it as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. You'll be less likely to make mistakes, and you'll be more likely to save some time. So how do we use scientific notation? Well, numbers are written in a very specific form. Um, I have it written as represented as m times 10 to the nth. And those letters, m and n, don't necessarily represent anything uh, special. I just use them arbitrarily to refer to them. The m has to be a number greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. That's, that's the rule for using scientific notation, is you have to make sure that first number is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So you could use 3.2, 1.875, 4.73, these are all acceptable numbers for that first, that, that letter M, that first number in the scientific notation. Things you couldn't use, 40.1 or 0 .00 or 0 .063, these are numbers that are not greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. The letter N, so that exponent on the 10, that has to be a whole number for using scientific notation correctly. So you could have um, 10 to the 3rd, 10 to the negative 6, or even 10 to the 0th power. It doesn't matter what number you use up there as long as it's a whole number. You can't use um, numbers that are decimals or numbers that are fractions as your exponent on that 10. So 7.6 wouldn't work, 0 0.1 wouldn't work, or 1 half wouldn't work as your exponent on the, on the 10. Let's take a look at some examples. So we have 7.24 times 10 to the sixth. We're gonna convert this into standard notation. But what does it even mean? What does that six um, exponent mean? Well, what you're doing is you're taking 7.24 and you're multiplying it by 10 six times. So really what we have here is we have a very large number represented and to to multiply it by 10 six times, what you need to do is you really just need to move the decimal over to the right six places. Because every single time you move that decimal to the right, it's, it represents you multiplying that number by 10. So we have a base 10 system, you don't have to know what that means, but what that, what, what that means for you is that every time you move the decimal to the right, you're multiplying it by 10 one time. So if we need to multiply this by 10 six times, we need to move the decimal over to the right six places. And just fill in the rest of those numbers with zeros, those rest of those places with zeros. <clears throat> now we have the same number, 7.24, but this time we're multiplying it by 10 to the negative sixth. Well, if you remember your math rules, essentially what we're doing here is we're dividing 7.24 by 10 six times times. So to do this um, using a decimal, like just by pushing a decimal, essentially what we're doing is we're moving it to the left six places. Because every single time we move it to the left, we're dividing by 10. So we get 0 .00000724. We That decimal was between the 7 and the 2 before, and now we've moved it and we've made this this number essentially small. So this is a really small number because we're dividing by 10 so many times.
So when we have 10 to the sixth, it's a big number, and when we have 10 to the negative sixth, it's a small number. Often I see students make errors in this because they see that negative six and they think, oh, that's a negative number. It's not. It's just a very, very small number. It's a number less than one. So try this one on your own. Pause the video and write it out. We have 9.501 times 10 to the third. So hopefully you were able to easily do this one. We're multiplying by 10 three times, so we need to move the decimal to the right three places because this is a large number because we're multiplying it by 10. So we have 9,501. Take a look at this one, 4.8 times 10 to the negative third. You can try this one on your own. Pause the video and try it. All right, this represents a very small number because we're dividing by 10 three times. So what you need to do is move the decimal to the left three places. This is a small number. So we have 0 .0048. Now if you move the decimal and you keep moving it and run out of numbers, you need to use zeros as those placeholders. So we get 0 .0048. Now let's try this one. This is the last one. It's kind of tricky and it's actually really pointless to do this one in scientific notation. We get 9.62 times 10 to the zeroth. Well, if you're dividing by 10 when it's negative, when the exponent is negative, and you're multiplying by 10 when the exponent is positive, uh, what are you doing when the exponent is zero? Well, you're not doing anything with that number. So 9.62 times 10 to the zeroth is really just 9.62. Now, you're not likely to ever see this number in scientific notation, but if you happen to along, your, uh, along the way, now you know what to do with that zero power. Now we're gonna be converting standard numbers into scientific notation, and we're gonna do the reverse process when we write these out. So we have 0 .0701. Now this is a very small number, so um, our exponent on that 10 is going to be negative because this is a small number, it's a number less than one. So we want to move the decimal so that we have a number greater than or equal to one but less than 10. So we're gonna move it over two places so that we get 7.01, and because we moved it over two places, our exponent is negative two. Now we have 6,948. Now the decimal, it's not written in there, but it happens to lie at the end of the number. If it's not represented, it can just be assumed it's at the end of the number. So we have 6.948, and we moved it over to the left three places because we wanted a number greater than or equal to one but less than 10. So we get 6.948 times 10 to the third because we moved the decimal over three places. Here we have 0 0.00000089, so tricky number, a long number, something I don't want to have to represent frequently as its actual number. I probably even miscounted the zeros. But it's 8.9 times 10 to the negative ninth. Remember, this is a very small number. The exponent has to be negative, and we moved the decimal nine times. Here we have 105, so if we move the decimal over to the left so that we can have that, that first value be greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10, we get 1.05 times 10 to the second power. And the last number we have here is 5.612, and to convert that to scientific notation, we take the decimal, which is uh, after the 2, it's it's not there, it's not represented, but we assume that it's after the two, and we have to move it over to the left three places. So we get 5.612 times 10 to the third, because we moved it over to the left three places. Just a side note here regarding scientific notation. Oftentimes, calculators don't represent scientific notation in the same exact way that you would write it. So here's how we can kind of understand what calculators really mean. So say we have the number 7.01 times 10 to the negative 2. A calculator may represent that as 7.01 e negative 2. As you can deduce here, the e represents times 10, and the number after the e would represent what power the 10 is being held to. So if we have 7.01 times 10 to the negative 2, sometimes that can be represented as 7.01e negative 2. So just remember, these are two different ways of writing the same thing.